So a lot of the times what we're trying to do is we're not really trying to discover law. You know what we're most of us trying to do instead? We're trying to do this. Are we not? Is it two L's? That's what we're trying to do most of the time. And why do we try to do that? Because we do not believe that finding and discovering more laws that God has created will give us freedom. We believe what it will do is constrain us. We believe it's going to restrict us further by knowing the laws. And so we've come up with this term. You know the term. It says ignorance is bliss. Isn't it? Is that the term that we often use? I can tell you as a fact that ignorance is not bliss. Bliss is knowing all of the laws and living by them. That's bliss. Right? So it's not ignorance that's, a, that's bliss. It's knowing everything, all the laws that govern your existence and living by them. That brings you bliss. Yep. If we come down in front to Jennifer. Wouldn't it be more um, wanting to live by the laws is bliss? Because, like, I can live by the laws, but I can be really, you know, angry about it or anxious about it. Or... But the reality is, Jennifer, and this is something that you've yet to really understand, I feel. The reality is that if you want to break the law while you're living by the law, you will never experience the bliss that comes from living by the law. Because there's a law that governs that as well. Does that make sense? And most of us have yet to discover the laws that cause our own pain as a result of our own rebellion or not even as a result of our rebellion. Many of us are reluctant ent, ent, <coughs> obeyers. We reluctantly obey. Right? How many of you would classify as a person that reluctantly obeys? You think about the laws of the land. How many of them do you reluctantly obey? <laughs> yeah, you, you imagine. So God's made this beautiful universe full of laws that are all created that will allow us to experience bliss if we engage every one of them. But the majority of us are not interested in finding the physical ones. We're not interested in finding the spiritual ones. And we're not interested in finding the soul-based laws because we want to be a rebel without a cause. <laughs> and there is no reason for doing it, but we want to be a rebel. And, and the things we can't rebel against without getting the real problem, we reluctantly obey. Now, under those circumstances, you are never going to experience bliss. Ever. Mary? Uh, I also feel we'll never experience faith. Exactly. Because it seems to me that faith comes when we experience the facts, not when we hear them. Yes. And if we reluctantly, if, if our heart really wants to rebel, then we never actually experience faith. We never expe experience the fact which builds our faith. Exactly. Yeah. And that for that reason, the majority of you here in the audience have no faith in anything that I've presented to you. Isn't that interesting? Because you're yet to want to want to experience it. You see? You reluctantly engage it many times. You go, oh, there, there's a law of attraction again in my <laughs> life, right? And you get all upset about it, like as if God's making a mistake. God made a mistake with that law, you know? <laughs> I'm getting this attraction and my soul attracted it I know that what I wish I never heard that I wish I never heard that my soul attracts these events 
Right? We were having a conversation the other day where someone was just angry that they were attracting that thing. I go, yeah, that's the, that's the rebellion. You, know? you, you don't want to accept that, that there's a law involved that's perfect and it's only our disharmony with it that causes these attractions. We don't want to accept that, right? And we go, no, no, it's not my fault. If it's not your fault, then whose fault is it? Like if you're attracted something into your personal life and it's not your fault, then whose fault is it? Well, to be honest, most of you believe it's God's fault. He shouldn't have made the law. If he made, if he made the law different, I'd have a different outcome, is the way that we often view it, right? But, but we don't understand. The law of gravity has, is fact, but it has some beautiful results, eh? Yeah. It, it, it meant that your very life lasted longer than about 25 seconds. Because otherwise you would have popped out of mum and flown off into space. <laughs> right? That's a loving outcome. You had a longer life than 25 seconds. And there goes the law of gravity, another loving outcome, right? right? And the law of aerodynamics have loving outcomes. All the, even all the physical laws have loving outcomes. Why wouldn't you then assume that all of the other laws that govern the other parts of your existence all also have loving outcomes if you understand them and engage them? Why wouldn't you assume this? Because you know what? We're totally addicted to having what we believe are our desires met. And so we only listen to the facts that meet up with our desires. We are totally dismissive of all the other facts, including dismissive of the very facts of what's happening to our life. Right? So we get a sore or some you know, ache here, pain there, whatever, we're totally dismissive of these facts that are being presented to us, not understanding. And the reason why we're dismissive, because we want to rebel, we're reluctant obeyers of the law. The majority of us have to work on that. Because, because if you truly want to ever have any faith about God and the future, you're going to have to learn to move from being a reluctant obeyer into wanting to understand the law and obey it, because it's the desire to understand the law and obey it that's given us the beautiful things that it's already given us. So, we benefit from somebody deciding that they wanted to understand the law of aerodynamics. Right? How many of you would have ever flown on your own desire if you didn't if we, somebody else didn't discover the law of aerodynamics. How many of you would have attempted to go through what, say, White, Whitehead, George Whitehead went through or, or the Wright brothers went through, where you spent a whole life discovering one particular thing just so you could do it? How many of you would be willing to do that? I suggest not very many of us. There are some of us, but not very many of us that are willing to do that. And the reason why is because... We feel certain things about law. We feel it's going to restrict us. Now, that, that is, there is no real reason why we could ever think that. Every time mankind has discovered a physical law, it has always resulted... In, that, that's an actual fact of the universe. It has always resulted in more freedom for mankind. So how can you then go, if I discover or know about a law that applies to me personally, that's going to result in less freedom? How can you do that? You can't. Not logically. Right? 